namaste mahirji and all others welcome all the participants to the special session on puranas as you are already aware many of you are uh, regular participants of our webinars special invited lectures amradarshanam part of school of spiritual and cultural studies amrita vishwavidyapeetham has been regularly conducting online courses programs to disseminate to spread the wisdom of our ancient rishis in today's episode we will be focusing on puranas puranas have always had a lasting impact on life in india whether we studied them or not they have in one way or other way become part of our day to day conversations and our thinking has been shaped by the puranas they have also become a portal into ancient indian living and philosophy today i invite all the participants for a special journey to the beautiful heritage of our india and our speaker of the day is sri mehul vora ji and he is author of the famous book secret goddesses of tantra he is also a film personality who has vast experience in the field of film making and television broadcast welcome mehul ji to the talk it's our day thank you om gyanati vinanda sir gyananjana shilaka ya chachurun miltam yena tasmay shri gurave namaha i pay my humble obeisances to all gurus and all great masters and i start my talk on introduction to puranas okay. now i've been uh, a little uh, you can say set back because what i hear is puranas are equated to mythology what people come and say that oh this is a mythology this is mythology so my first slide is not mythology but it is sacred history so mythology comes from the word myth mithya in sanskrit we call it as mithya so if puranas were mythology and mithya then we will never get any geographical data in puranas we will never get any medicinal data in puranas we will not get iconography and sculpturing uh, data in the puranas because it is mithya right so it proves that puranas are not mithya but they are sacred history which have been past from generation to generation and they still exist nobody uh, can date a purana because it has been ad- existing from ages so uh, some research scholars they date puranas like this is 3rd century 4th century 9th century 10th century but what i personally believe is you cannot date a purana because although the puranas may not be recorded or may not be written but since time in memorial our knowledge system our indian knowledge system was never documented like vedas were never documented they were passed through shruti I mean, they were narrated somebody heard and the other person narrated and it went on that is how we get our epics we get our puranas we get our vedas and we get many other texts so puranas i believe are very very rich in sacred history as we will journey through uh, the mahapuranas we will understand what kind of information that we get from puranas so definitely puranas are not mythology uh, puranas are actually sacred history and they are sacred because they are uh, rich in literature they are rich in uh, science mathematics and many things you get in puranas so who authored purana so puranas were authored by maharishi vedavyas who is credited to document all the vedas upanishads and puranas and who narrated the puranas suta so now next is who is suta so whenever you read any purana suta uvacha the first statement that you will hear is suta uvacha suta said who is suta is suta one person or are different sutas narrating different puranas so suta uh, goes to naimisharanya forest there he meets with different different sages 
एंड ही नरेट्स पुराणस द वन नेम वी गेट इज उग्रश्रवा इज वन ऑफ द सूतर्स एंड टेक्निकली स्पीकिंग देर आर मेनी सूतर्स तो हु इज अ सूता सूतास आर अ स्पेशल क्लास दे आर अ स्पेशल क्लास हु आर बॉर्न ऑफ अ क्षत्रिया फादर एंड अ ब्राह्मीण मदर बिकॉज दे आर अ मिक्सड क्लास दे सॉर्ट ऑफ हैव एन अथॉरिटी टू नरेट द पुराण तो सूतास वर बेसिकली स्टोरी टेलर्स दे वुड से दट आई हर्ड दिस information from veda vyasa who was telling to angirasa and from there i came to know this and i am telling you this knowledge i am telling you what bhishma pitama told krishna and that is how i am telling you this knowledge so that is how the uh, puranas were communicated to us and that is how it came to us then what is purana so purana meaning is says that old legend never you will find purana in puranas associated with anything fictional so puranas are not fictional if anybody has got any notion that purana is fictional definitely it is not fictional because if you see the content of each purana you will understand that you cannot fictionalize this it is impossible so puranas have got a structure okay so purana etymologically means पूर्व भाव पूर्वस्मिन काले समथिंग दैट हैपेंड इन अ ओल्डन टाइम इन एंशियंट टाइम्स तो पुराना इज समथिंग दैट हैपेंड इन एंशियंट टाइम वी से इन हिंदी वी से पुराण पुराना दिस इज पुराना इन हिंदी वी से पुराना दैट मीन्स ओल्ड पुराना इज नथिंग बट इट्स ओल्ड बिकॉज इट हैपेंड इन द पास्ट वट एवर द पुराना नॉलेज वी गेट इट इज Uh, come to us because it happened in olden times it happened in the past vayu purana says yasmat pura yahan natiram puranam tena tasmritam because it breathes in the past padma purana says pura param param vasti puranam tena cha smritam it says purana because it desires or likes the past similarly Again, in another verse of Padma Purana says, "Puranam sarva shastranam prathamam Brahma smritam." Puranam sarva shastranam prathamam Brahma smritam. Purana appeared before all shastras and was first contemplated by <coughs> the Brahmanas. So, Puranas have got a structure, a characteristic. So, we get this verse in Padma Purana: "Saragascha prati sagras." वंशो वंवान्तराक्षण you will find the creation happened from shiva so first story of shiva purana is arunachaleshwaram where uh, brahma and vishnu were having a tiff saying that who saw uh, the beginning and the end of the creation suddenly comes agni stambha shiva and then he makes them understand that i am the supreme brahman i am the supreme creator because brahma again vouched uh, on the ketki flower falling and said that uh, since ketki flower is falling from the sky i am very sure that it must be falling from somewhere so therefore i say that i have seen the beginning of the creation the lord shiva got angry and he appeared as agni stambha and that is how brahma got his curses of not being worshiped and all because he lied so vishnu puran on the other hand padma purana and bhagavatam will say that the creation happened from the supreme purusha vishnu was lying down on the uh, ocean and from his navel appeared a lotus and from the lotus appeared brahma so the lotus is a symbolism of brahmanda which we get in the rigveda hiranyagarbha suktam that we talk in rigveda 
is the golden egg formation and in puranas we see the similar kind of concept of uh, hiranagarbha plus purusha suktam wherein uh, the creation happens from the body parts of the supreme purusha krishna or vishnu then prati sarga prati sarga is recreation after dissolution of the world this is when uh, manu swayambhu manu was told to create to populate the planet then it talks about vamsa so we will see the vamsa of shri ramchandra is there rikshavaku uh, is there then we will see uh, chandra vamsha surya vamsha then we will see many other vamshas that are mentioned in different 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 puranas then we talk about manvantara so manvantara is a concept of time wherein four chaturyugas traveling four times becomes one manvantara something like that calculation we get in the padma purana so that is manvantara so there are seven manus now we are uh, vai uh, vaivatsva manu right now future manu ashwadhama is going to be there so that is how the manvantara uh, concept is mentioned in the puranas then we are talking about vamsa vamshaya anu char anu charita the behavior uh, or code of conduct of different dynasties so this is panchalakshana purana then we get dashalakshana purana wherein we have multiple levels of uh, creation and multiple aspects so so dashalakshana purana is usually bhagavatam shrimad bhagavatam which is one of the very very important puranas for vaishnavas in that uh, in the canto 12 we get sarago sayasta visargascha vritti rakshan trani cha hai वंशो वंशानुचरतम समस्त हेतुर्पश्रय दशाभक्षा पुराण तद्विदो विदु केचि पंच विदम ब्रह्म महदअल्प व्यवस्था सो इट सेज दैट फर्स्ट इज सरगा दैट इज अगेन सटल क्रिएशन देन इट इज ग्रॉस क्रिएशन सो सटल क्रिएशन इज द क्रिएशन ऑफ ब्रह्म क्रिएशन ऑफ रुद्रा क्रिएशन ऑफ अदर गॉड्स ग्रॉस क्रिएशन इज विसर्गा अगेन क्रिएशन ऑफ पृथ्वी देन अदर सप्तरिषीज एंड फोर डिफरेंट वर्णस क्षत्रिय ब्राह्मण वैश्य शूद्र एंड पुरुष सूक्तम बी गेट नो दैट मुकन किम बाहू राजन्य कृता उ वैश्य पदगम शूद्र जायता तो हाउ फ्रॉम द फीट केम शूद्रास फ्रॉम आर्म्स केम क्षत्रिया फ्रॉम स्तमक फ्रॉम बेली ऑफ द पुरुषा केम दी वैश्य एंड फ्रॉम द हेड came brahmanas so that is how that is how gross creation happens that is the visarga part then law and order what should be done what should not be done how should one behave and what are different punishments and benefits that you get like garur puran is full of punishments if you see preta kanda of garur puran you will find different kind of punishment for different things which are prohibited then protection poshana so lord incarnates in different forms as in different avatars and protects then and uh, destroys many demons like hiranyakashipu hiranyaksh ravan and many more then the fifth uh, is material lust for karma uti so material lust for karma is in uh, you can talk about here i can talk about the story of ajamila who was a very very lusty man a very corrupt man but somehow because he at the time of death remembered lord vishnu dutas came and took him away then comes the period of manus and manvantara then accounts of deeds of the lord then ishanu kataha it it talks about different past times of the lord so we can talk about krishna leela ram uh, ramayana then we can talk about other incarnation who appeared on the planet and did some good past times then comes physical annihilation that is nirodha that is destruction then liberation mukti and the last one is ashraya so what is the ultimate reality ultimate reality is to surrender to the supreme god so content of the puranas in brief are art science medicine grammar uh, then you have dramaturgy music astrology and many more so then we get some dharma shastra material from puranas like acharya religious duties then like padma purana talks about how a brahmana should 
be when it talks about how a devotee of vishnu should be similarly different puranas talk about different religious duties of a person then ashrama dharma so varnashrama dharma what a kshatriya should do what a vaishya should do what a brahmana should do what a shudra should do then it talks about different gifts dana so padma puran uh, talks about different gifts agni puran talks about different gifts that should be given by certain class of the people by certain people which in return brings lot of spiritual and material benefits then prayaschita again attunement for sins whatever sins we have done like uh, for example somebody has killed a brahmana or somebody has indulging in alcohol so how should one do prayaschita it is mentioned then shraddha shraddha rituals so garud puran agni puran uh, padma puran all the puran somewhere talk about how should we please our ancestors how should we do shraddha especially garud puran because garud puran is known to be recited uh, as a part of shraddha rituals then we have tirtha tirthas are holy places uh, if you talk about skanda puran we have uh, maheshwara kanda vaishnava kanda which talks about uh, different different tirtha kshetram throughout the country uh, badrinath uh, jagannath puri uh, and kedarnath in different 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 tirtha kshetrams prayagraj varanasi are disclo- are glorified in the puranas then we have the order of the puranas so the order of the puranas can vary some uh, puranas are substituted so a general order of the puranas are brahma padma vishnu vayu bhagavatam naradiya markandeya agni pavishya brahma vaivarta varaha linga skanda vamana kurma matsya garuda brahmanda and some places we have devi bhagavatam some places we have shiva puran instead of vayu puran and uh, <coughs> like that some puranas are substituted so when you talk about puranas what all mahapuranas are there it is mentioned in matsya puran it is mentioned in padma puran it is mentioned in shrimad bhagavatam 12th canto summarization of different mahapuranas so somewhere they include shiva puran somewhere they omit shiva puran add another but moreover these are the different different puranas that we will journey through then there are upa puranas so sanat kumar narsimha purana nanda purana shiva dharma kapila purana all these are kalika purana all these are small small upa puranas sab puranas they are very short uh, in nature and they have just few chapters and they discuss about a specific thing like narsimha puran talks about more over incarnation of narsimha dev then we have ganesha puran that talks about life of lord ganesha and mudgala puran again talks about lord ganesha so like that there are very very small small uh, puranas very short puranas they are called upa puranas then another set of minor upa puranas called ati puranas are more shorter version they are vaishvakarma purana dattatre purana dharma purana then uh, very popular literature of south india periya puran so sangam literature is very important purana periya puran uh, is also upa puran uh, very minor puran they, they are very small in nature and they specifically talk about a certain uh, aspect okay before i move on to next slide has anybody like do any, does anybody have any idea why there are 18 puranas can anybody guess why 18 only why not 20 what is the significance of 18 18 mahapuranas so 18 mahapuranas are 18 in number because they have a very very strong correlation with mahabharata mahabharata war was fought for 18 days total armies were 18 akshuhini so akshuhini is a set of uh, warriors wherein a number of elephant riders are there number of horse riders are there number of 
फुट सोल्जर्स आर देर लाइक दैट देर आर एंड नंबर ऑफ चैरिएट वॉरियर्स आर देर तो एटीन अक्षोहिनी आर्मी वर फॉट महाभारत महाभारत हेज गॉट एटीन परवास एंड गीता हेज गॉट एटीन चैप्टर्स तो मेजरली वाई महाभारत इज मेन्शन हियर तो प्रांशु जी हेज जस्ट मेन्शन अबाउट वसूज एंड रुद्रास सो रुद्रास एंड वसूज आर मोर मेन्शन इन द वेदास सो हियर आई वुड लाइक टू क्लियर अ मिसकनसेप्शन how many devi devtas are there in our sanatan no, uh, what i was saying is all the numerals mm. from the very beginning of the brahmi script mm. each numeral also represents a term so for example 8 represents vasus as well as 8 11 represents rudras also mm. 12 represents adityas also 18 is katyapadi for dharma correct correct 21 correct. is katyapadi for yes so correct. each each of the numbers First twenty, mm. first thirty-six or forty-nine actually also represent uh, a phenomena or a or a or a concept inside uh, Hinduism or or right. like you know Puranic and Vedic literature. Yes, but there is uh, why I have not included this here and why I have just included Mahabharata because when you look at Puranas, you will find Mahabharata and Ramayana intermingled, like. Padma Puran has got one full canto on Ramayan, one full canto on Mahabharat. Same goes for many other Puranas. So Mahabharata was very, very strongly connected. Even if you uh, pick up Shiva Puran, somewhere you will find some link of Mahabharata. And author of Mahabharata is also Veda Vyas, and Purana is heard story. A Purana is a story that is heard by a Suta, somewhere, some place in some ashram. as a communication between uh, either vyasa or vashishta or any other uh, guru and that is how he heard and he says that i heard this so that is why 18 uh, as pranshu ji said but more it is connected to mahabharata because the core of puranas somewhere is highly dependent on mahabharata Because you will find Bhishma said, and Mahabharata is eighteen also because the same dharm concept, hmm. Athara Akshani. The word actually hmm. is basically is dharm. It's a dharm yud, and eighteen days. You know, it's it's actually dharm parva. Hmm. So hmm. The, again, the Mahabharat it's a the whole whole uh, dharana of hmm. both Mahabharat and the Purans itself is the dharm itself. That's hmm. the why the word eighteen comes again and again. Hmm. So if you look at every context. Pandu was away in exile eighteen years. Yes. Eighteen years after Mahabharat, Dhritarash dies. Eighteen yes. years after that, Krishna dies. Eighteen yes. it continues through, but also is telling you the second story. It's dharm. Dharm is a part of it. The whole thing is around a sort of a uh, the the boundary line of the universe is dharm itself, hmm. and that's why the eighteen is there. So we have more than eighteen Purans because in Sh- in Shrimad Bhagavat, you know, in the beginning itself. Shuk says to Parikshit that after writing eighteen Mahapurans mm. and Hari Vansh and Mahabharat, mm. Ved Vyas wanted to write Shrimad, and that's where he tells Those the story Shima of Shrimad Bhagavat. Bhagavat Purana. Correct, correct, correct. Yeah, the nineteenth Puran actually. So, the, but well, eighteen is we are using it to indicate they are Dharma Purans, mm. literally word Dharma Puran mm. uh, oh. as the concept. So, so eighteen. So that's what I just said in the earlier slide, wherein I spoke about how. some puranas omit certain other puranas and they narrow down to 18 because uh, if you go to see periya purana of sangam literature is not considered as minor puran it is a major puran because it is huge periya puran of sangam literature is huge but still it is given ati puran category it is put as ati puran category whereas there are some puranas Like Brahmanda Puran, uh, Brahma Puran, which is a very small narrative, Narad, uh, Narada Puran, which is very small, but that is also given as a category. It is categorized as Mahapuran. So that is there. Like Kurma Puran is not very huge. Like Skanda Puran, Padma Puran, huge. When you talk about Brahma Kurma Puran and Kurma, also we have lost majority of it. Like you know, less than half of the value is available. We have lost a lot of uh, Brahma and uh, Brahma Purana. Also, it's supposed to be ten thousand shlokas, but we have hardly five thousand shlokas, you know, left. 
correct but so that but, is also because of the you know we have lost a lot of our literature also over the last 1000 years yes but uh, what i here tend to believe is the lost literature as in we've not yet discovered but whatever is what we have is the reference point where we can refer and this is what we have what we have lost what we have not lost is very debatable because again when you talk about dating of a purana how can you date a purana when the whole knowledge of purana was shruti smriti heard and said so again saying that we have lost saying that these words were added so shrimad bhagavatam shrimad bhagavatam is a purana which is very modern very very modern but it is it has got the element that other puranas do not have so instead of like we i hear i disagree with the uh, academicians wherein they say that we've lost this we've lost that and uh, this is very this is 6th century work this is 18th century work you are going on the linguistics of the purana but uh, if you go by the linguistic then bhavishya purana should not at all be considered because bhavishya purana is a history book mughals came british came he would find about britishers and he would find about islam because if he would the reference would be there in some of the other puranas like if i talk about skanda puran some sthala puran of skanda purana i pick up padma puran sthal puran i'll find some similarity 